This is the Football Podcast with your hosts, Tyler, Andy, and Boyer. Welcome back to Manasy Football Podcast presented by, once again, two of your PEDs. What's happening, dude? Not a lot. Long time no see. I know, right? Thanks for Jeremy jumping on last week, helping me out. Um, hopefully, everybody liked that. You, did you enjoy your uh, the the predictions, uh, the uh, NFL comparisons? I mean, I don't appreciate being compared to the Packers, but I think it was fair. <laughs> but o- overall, it was it was enjoyable. It was fun. Yeah, it was fun. It's good stuff. Good, something a little different, something unique. So thanks for Jeremy for bringing that on. It was fun. It was it was interesting to pull who was who and kind of how we processed through that was because like Jeremy put out six right away and he's like, here are the six that I got. Here are the teams I'm comparing to. And I was like, a couple of those I wanted to compare to, but I was right. like, I can't double up. So I'm sitting here like, so, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> I didn't feel like anything was too big of a reach. So you guys made it work. Yeah. So. All right, well, last week, I beat Robbie, uh, which I should have. Jeremy beat Boyer, which he should have. Also, Boyer beats Jeremy if he holds on to Josh Allen. It's crazy. The 30-point swing from Josh Allen to Tua. You would have lost. Saying, I would have lost. Boyer would have won. Things would be weird. Um, so Josh Allen, four dollar purchase is working out just fine so far. I lost the duo, although I got five extra points out of him. I still lost the duo the first week I bought him. But this week made a big difference. So there you go. Sorry. I had to throw that out there for all my haters. Um, so Jeremy beat Boyer. Uh Chris takes down Fryer. Uh luckily Fryer still got enough of a lead. Uh, puts Chris at six and six. We'll talk about him and the in the wild card chase ish. Um, Walker beating Paul uh, was one of the biggest things this week. Keeps Walker in the hunt. Uh, keeps Paul tied with uh, Colin for the bottom. So that match will be fun next week. Um, the duo beats Andy, which is. Pretty predictable, I think. So, Stu, I put up a fight, and then Charlie beat. What's that? You did? I said I put up a fight. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, Charlie beat Colin, which was also expected. So, all the games were pretty expected, except for maybe Fryer losing, um, and then Walker needed that win to stay in. So, pretty chalk week for the most part. Um, do you want to? Jeremy kind of put it out there, but you want to give us a quick uh, clinch situation for the top of the division um and then kind of talk about maybe who jeremy threw it out there but who's left in wild card we can after this week we can run down full-on scenarios yeah i think so for this week specifically i'm not going to talk about full paths for everybody but for this week specifically ty and fryer are both up three games um if you were to either of you were to go zero and three and uh, Robbie or Chris were to go three and zero to catch you. Um, you and Fryer both would lose the division record tiebreaker. So, all that to say, if either of you win your games this week, then you would clinch division. Um, Jeremy can also clinch this week, um, although I don't know that Yahoo will be smart enough to give him a little asterisk next next to his name uh, or not, but. Um, Jeremy plays the duo this week, which is obviously a big matchup for him. Um, If Jeremy wins, he'll be two games ahead of the duo with two games left, and duo wouldn't be able to catch him in the division record, so he would win a tiebreaker there. Um, Charlie could still catch him and would then have the division record tiebreaker if that were to happen. So Jeremy would clinch this week with a win over the duo and a Charlie loss um, to Walker. So 
there is a path for all three of the division leaders right now to clinch in the first of these last three divisional weeks. Um, I'm not going to get into wild card uh, matchup type stuff um, because it's just real messy with how many teams are still in the thick of it. Um, theoretically, uh, Boyer and Robbie and Walker have a shot, but they would have to go three and O duo would have to go. zero and three Charlie would have to go one and two beating the duo. So it's a real tight window for any of those guys to make that move. Um, same with Chris being six and six. He's got his work cut out for him, but Chris gets to play Paul and Colin. So maybe not. <laughs> yep. All right. Um, so here we are already. Let's hit a little. Pow. What are you drinking? I got a fruit punch body armor. Not a sponsor. It's it's good. I'm drinking peach whiskey on the rocks. Uh, Jeremy called me a bitch for putting rocks in it and making it cold but here i am so I called you a bitch for the rocks not the peach yeah right <laughs> well i drink it straight or neat if i was a man but here i am drinking it with rocks neat is i believe the preferred term i'm drinking juice so well, it's mostly coconut water i think but uh, it's supposed to have vitamins or some shit i don't know me neither all right well Glad we're a handful of minutes in and already hitting what are you drinking? It's not 37 seconds or whatever it was, but, you know, it's still early. So that'll tell you what kind of podcast we're having today. Um, Just so everybody's aware, we've scrapped the record of picks and stuff with the last couple of weeks being all messed up. So there you are. We're going to keep win. making picks. Andy is currently the winner, so he wins. I don't know. Whatever. I think, that, I think, I think that's, that's how that goes. Boyer didn't put in picks. Andy put him in late. I did it by myself one week. Andy didn't put him in last week. I don't know. Everything was messed up. It's fine. All right, moving on. That's enough of that conversation. All right. Uh, it's been a while, but you uh, remember how this works? Uh, we start with Colin Kelly's matchup first. I do know how this works. Colin Kelly's matchup is not looking pretty for him right now um, on account of the whole bye week situation. Um Dalton Kincaid on a bye, kicker defense, both on a bye. He's got the Jets against Atlanta that he could pull in there. Um, but after selling off his team and then having all these bye weeks, uh, Collins' team is uh, respectfully in shambles. Um, so I'm not going to get into too many lineup decisions here because he's going to have to make probably several moves just to get where he's going. Um, on Ty's side, also a lot of bye week issues, um, but not near as bad as what Colin's dealing with. Um, you're not going to play Quentin Johnston or Elijah Mitchell this week, um, and everybody else is on a bye. So I think we're pretty locked in here once Colin fills out his roster <laughs> he'll be projected somewhere probably in the mid 60s maybe low 70s and ty sitting at right at about 90 which is more than i tend to score in a week even with the, my full lineup so i'm gonna go ahead and pick ty in this one yep same uh real quick before we yep. move on from this uh colin kelly traded josh jacobs away at the trade deadline Mm -hmm. uh, for $10 in cream point. And then he also traded Eckler for $19 to me. Do you want to cover either of those real quick? Um, yeah, we can. I think uh, $19 is more than I thought Eckler was worth. Um, given those two prices, I had a much rather paid for Jacobs at half the cost. Um, getting Kareem Hunt back helps Colin in his quest to beat Paul because that's his path to keeping his clothes on with his points being what they are right now. Um, so, you know, maybe there's a, an argument there, but from the, the duo's perspective, losing Kareem Hunt to upgrade to Josh Jacobs is nothing. So I think that was a, a good deal on the duo's side. Um, 
Ty, I don't blame you for going to get Eckler, but it was a bit pricey and good for Colin for hitting max money next year. Yeah. I, at, th at that point, it was what it was. I was making a big purchase. I was selling out. Yep. And I thought Eckler had a better end of the season schedule. So I went with that. So I, I paid what I could and that's what I had. I will say I had uh, a lot of interest in Bijan and then everybody scattered to all the other running backs, Taylor and Jacobs and Eckler and whoever, which doesn't bother me. I've got like 215, 217, something like that next year. And I'm happy to hold him to try to put up a fight as the season, very disappointing though it's been, comes to a close. And Bijan finally, finally starts getting the work that I thought that he deserved from week one. But any thoughts on why nobody wanted Bijan? Do you think they were just scared because of the timeshare? His yeah, schedule is thought... juicy in the playoffs. Yeah, I, well, and and I I would have come back Bijan if I didn't get Eckler. Sure. Um, Eckler's got a great playoff schedule as well, so I decided to take that. Um, but I I think a mix of the timeshare, mix of just Atlanta and just general and, and Bijan just not getting touchdowns yeah and I, so. I I think I was valuing him higher than what people were probably willing to spend I think I was having some offers early on in the like 8 to 10 range and people tell me a couple people told me they weren't going to go more than 10 I was like well for 10 I'm going to keep him so I I like him more I think he's better than the ten dollars he's going to do more good for me than than putting 10 more dollars in my pocket next year. So maybe it was just on me, but it was nice to see him have a big week this week, at least. Yep. And those, those two trades really affect me and his matchup this week. So I figured we'd throw it out there. Yep. I like it. So, all right. Duo versus Jeremy. Ooh, this one is spicy. What do you think, Ty? Um, Jeremy got T Higgins. Uh, which may or may not play in the trade deadline. Um, I, I wasn't necessarily mad about it. Sending six dollars to Boyer getting Higgins, like I thought that was a fair value to send off, assuming Higgins plays. Um, so there was that. Um, but otherwise, end of the matchup here. The duo did get uh, Josh Jacobs. Jacobs is on a bye this week. Um, so it doesn't help them against Jerry, which is maybe a match they needed to win. And we'll, we'll kind of see how it plays out here. But, you know, if they win the next two, they can make wild card. Uh, Jeremy has Herbert, St. Brown, Henry, Kyron come back strong. Um, he's missing digs this week. That's his big uh, – by week, um, but he's got Josh Downs. I like Josh Downs. Uh, he's missing a kicker. He'll fill that out. Um, the Los Angeles Rams defense against Cleveland. I'm playing them instead of Philly against San Fran. I think. Agreed. So, I, I like that play already. Um, the duo side, they have JSN. So, but I'm not playing, even with Garrett Wilson and the quarterback problem, I'm still playing Garrett Wilson. Yeah, uh, Wilson had a nice Christian. week last week too. Yeah, so. um, So, I, I'm leaving their lineup the same. They have New Orleans against Detroit, Houston against Denver, and Indy against Tennessee. Um, Honestly, don't love any of those. Indy Probably leaving Indy against Tennessee, but. Yep, I would agree. I would agree. Uh, Detroit can score. Denver's been good. Um, so I, yeah, I'm playing. I'm playing Indy, but otherwise, there's not a lot of lineup decisions here. Um, I guess shooting back over to Jeremy's side, would you play Lockett or Higgins if he's playing over Downs? I don't think so. Um, it's I don't love any of them, um, but I, I do think that I'm going to lean toward downs here. Um, if Burrow was healthy and Higgins was coming off this injury, I'd feel differently, but Higgins coming off the issues he's having without Joe Burrow, 
I don't know that I'm playing him the rest of the year. And that's just a bummer with the timing of the trade deadline and Burrow getting hurt. But um, Lock, Lockett's been pretty quiet. He hasn't had a 100-yard game yet this year. He's only had double-digit targets twice. He's only had four touchdowns in three of his 11 games. So, you know, I don't. And I feel like JSN's come on a little bit more as the seasons come along. So uh, I'm keeping Downs in. All right. So who's winning this matchup? I'm going to go Jeremy. Um, but it's a bummer. I wish that I wish that this matchup in particular could have been in week 14 or 15. Uh, week 13 is such a brutal bye week uh, with DJ Moore and Josh Jacobs and Stefan Diggs all missing from this matchup. It's just a bummer to not get to see these two teams duke it out at full strength for, you know, what's probably going to be a playoff spot. Um, not that they both can't still make it, even if one of them suffers a loss when some one of them suffers a loss this week, but it just would have been a lot more fun to see him at full strength, but I'm going to lean toward Jeremy. Uh, I am as well. Just Christian Watson, Garrett Wilson, AJ Dillon just don't excite me. Uh, I know the duo has firepower with Hertz and Kelsey and them, but I think Jeremy's team top to bottom is a little bit more filled out. So I would agree yeah. with you on that one. Yeah. Duo's team right now is looking kind of like it did early on in the season. It's like, Oh, it's Hertz and Kelsey and not a lot else behind that. And some weeks that's enough and it might be enough this week, but it's just not, there's not a lot there. Yep. All right. You want to move us to uh Chris versus Paul? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, so Chris uh, is looking at Cooper cup and James cook on a buy. Um, Isaiah likely also on a buy. So he's going to have to pick up a tight end, but beyond that um, still got Gibbs and Mostert. Um, Tank Dell has been a stud. Tyreek Hill's there. Um, Tyler's been pretty good. Um, what do you think, Kyler Murray at Pittsburgh? Um, he's been good since he got back. Or are you looking at Sam Howell in a game against Miami where he's going to have to throw a lot to keep up? Or do you not uh, care because Chris is going to win this one going away? <laughs> uh, I'm going to leave Kyler Murray in. Um, I think Pittsburgh defense is they, – they rush better, but I think that there's – more passing ability on him. So I think Kyler will do it and Kyler will do it with his legs. So I'm going to leave Kyler in and hope um, Sam Howell's been a little bit more in the down slide these last couple weeks. Yeah. Uh, looking over at Paul's side, he's got Addison on a bye. He can put uh, Deonta Johnson in there, um, which since – He's come back from his early season injury. Hasn't done a lot. He's been getting the targets. He always gets the targets, but he's had two. His last three games have been 17 yards, 16 yards, and then 50 yards once they finally got rid of uh, Patricia. So not anything I'm super jazzed about, but looking at his other options, Gabe Davis is on a bye. Khalil Herbert's on a bye. What are you going to do? I'm going to play Pat Fryermuth over Deontay Johnson. For real? Yep. All right. I mean, Johnson's, I can not blame you. Johnson hasn't been fighting with coaches. He hasn't been good. Fryermuth came back and was a safety blanket, and they used him a lot. So, yeah. uh, Bengals do not cover the tight end very well, um, but 11 targets for 120 yards. Can't argue with that in the first game also, with Arizona. the new offensive coordinator. Also, Arizona's just not good, so true. they could target him all day. Very true. All right. Well, once they once Chris gets a tight end and once Paul puts Friarmouth in at the flex, who you got one in this one? Oh, I lied. I said Cooper Cup was on a bye, and he is not. He's just on Chris's bench. Put him in over Thielen. Um, I am. Yes. Yeah. Even against Cleveland, I want to get Cooper Cup in. 
Thielen has fallen off. Bryce Young is not doing well. Um, but before the bye, Adam Thielen was just a monster. Since then, he's still been getting targets. He's had double digits in three of their five, but capping out at 74 yards, no touchdowns in those five games. It's not the same. Also, they fired everybody, so who knows what that team's going to be this week. Yeah, maybe he maybe he plays quarterback. Who knows? We, we don't know. New coach, new who this, you know? Um, But on that, I'm going to take Chris, but I think this is a lot closer than we're probably giving it credit for. Yeah. As somebody who wants Paul to lose for naked purposes, I'm nervous that he's going to win this one. I'm going to pick Chris. I I think Chris should win, but uh, I'm I'm nervous. Paul's got a window here. Yeah, for sure. All right. Moving along to Walker versus Charlie. Oh, I don't were there any big trades for that last matchup? Um, I don't think there were. I don't think so. I mean, Walker. Paul, Paul had sold Jefferson earlier and Adams, so he he sold before the deadline. Um, yeah. And Chris didn't really buy anybody at the deadline. Nope. All right. Glad so, we talked. All right. <laughs> um, Walker held Pat, hoping to make a run. Um, I know I'd reached out to him about a couple guys. I know that he said he had some other offers coming out. Um, held Pat trying to make a run. So this is a game that he has to win. Um, Charlie, if I'm not mistaken, he bought Jonathan Taylor. And then he also bought Zach Moss, which is great. He also um, he bought Joe bought Burrow him. and gave me Trevor Lawrence and $4. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, man. Um. But getting Zach Moss is huge now. Yeah. With, with two weeks of no Jonathan Taylor. I'm bummed I don't have him because I could use I could probably beat Fryer this week if I had him. <laughs> so all right. Um Walker's team has Dobbs on a bye and Keaton on a bye. So Walker got real hurt by buys this week. Um otherwise. You got no lineup decisions, I don't think. Chuba Hubbard, Hubbard over Najee or Pollard. I'm not going to do either of those, especially Najee looked really good after last week. Yeah, and I don't want to play Hubbard at Tampa. Yep. Uh, Najee against Arizona should be juicy too, so. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, that was a rough one for uh, Walker's side. Uh, Charlie's side is sitting. Hawkinson's on a bye. Jonathan Taylor is injured. Fields is on a bye. Um, so he currently has Russell Wilson at quarterback, which has looked better lately. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he's got Zach Moss that'll come in over Jonathan Taylor. Uh, Ridley or Metcalf after last week leaving Ridley in. Yeah, with the way that Lawrence has been playing, I'm keeping Ridley in. Um, yeah. And Dallas's defense is is pretty solid, so I don't I'm not trying to get DK in the way he's been playing this year. Yep. All right. Well, and then after that, he's got Pittsburgh versus Arizona on defense or Detroit against New Orleans, you're leaving Pittsburgh against Arizona. Yeah. Um so he's going to find a tight end and plug him in. Other than that, there's no other lineup decisions that I'm seeing. Um, so what do you got on this one? Um, I'm going to go with Walker. Um, his team is much more full strength. Charlie uh, losing Hawkinson, Taylor, and Fields to injuries or by this week is a much bigger blow than Walker being down Keaton Mitchell and not being able to play Josh Dobbs over Patrick Mahomes is going to slow him down. I'm sure 
Um, but I think Walker's got this one just because of where their teams are at. Yeah. 13 and 0 Charlie's gonna go to seven and six. I would agree with you. Yep. Those bye weeks are a bitch. <laughs> Um, all right, you want to do Boyer and Robbie? Yep. Sure. Um, all right, so Boyer has uh Tucker's on a bye, and that's about it. Amari Cooper's been banged up, Rashi Rice has looked good. You want to get either of them in over Cortland Sutton or Mike Evans? Probably not. Um, you could put uh Rashad White up and bench Warren if you want for either of those guys, but I don't think that you really need to keep Jalen Warren in. Um, Yeah, against Arizona, I am. You want to play Gibson, don't you? <laughs> no, not this week. Hey, proud of you. Um, <laughs> Robbie's side is a bit more hurt by the bye weeks. Uh, Barkley and Madison both out is a bummer for – uh, him in the running back department, but he's got Connor and Aaron Jones, so he'll be okay, just not full strength. Um, any lineup decisions over here, you want to try to get Judy in um, over Hopkins or Kirk or Terry? I I don't think so. I I I do, but I, I mean, Judy has 440 yards and one touchdown this year. On All 37 right. catches. It's been bad. And like for how much he popped off in the last month of last year and for how decent the Broncos offense is, where is this guy? Where's he been? Yeah. Uh, I would love to get him in, but I think you leave Hopkins in and hope for a big game out of him still. He's been bad the last couple weeks too, but you can't yep. sit him. Yep. Um, Boyer, real quick. Yeah, Boyer, getting Rash- Boyer getting Rashad White back in the Jonathan Taylor trade. Uh, getting Rashad, lot. White, Rashad White and Jalen Warren is looking good at this point for him. Um, definitely helps try to keep – I mean, he, he should be full on out of naked contention at this point. Oh, yeah, um, easily. I, he's, he's not making a, a big run at playoffs here, but you know what? It, having those two players to play week in and week out at this point is a nice trade off for an injured uh, Jonathan Taylor at this point. Yep. So I like that trade, especially now. Yeah, no kidding. Um, did Robbie do anything at the deadline? I'm assuming nope. no. Nope. Yeah, makes sense. He did get Hawkinson early in the year. That was a big move. No, I lied. He gave up Hawkinson, he got Madison. He had Hawkinson and Kittle, and then he didn't yeah, like the two right, wide receiver right. set. I remember. Um, all right, so who's winning this matchup then? Um, I'm going to give it to Boyer. Uh, I really like Tua at Washington, but this is another one where Robbie missing his top two running backs is a bummer because he probably wins this game, you know, eight or nine times out of 10, but it's just a hell of a bye week and it's hitting him a lot harder than it's hitting Boyer, but I'm going to go Boyer. Yep. I am on board with that. I was going to say the same thing. Connor and Jones, I'm not overly excited about. So I think that hurts him. Kirk's been decent. Hopkins been not great. So yeah, I'm going to give it to Boyer. I think Sutton against Houston, if that becomes a shootout, like all Houston's games have been Mm -hmm. Sutton could, Sutton could be 100 yards and a couple touchdowns this week, and that'll push Boyer over the top. Yeah, I tried to sell high on Sutton when I gave him to Boyer earlier this season for like three bucks or something, and he just kept going. He's doing really well. Yeah. So, all right, let's jump to you versus Fryer then. Um, shouldn't be overly uh, long and concerning here. You got uh, Devin Chain coming back, maybe. Goddard coming back, maybe. <laughs> Here's hoping. <laughs> you get Komet on a bye. Musgrave is on IR now. Yep. Miles Sanders is garbage. Yep. Algie is a backup to Bijan. Finally. So your bench is spot. So luckily, 
you've got a full lineup. So I don't think we have any lineup decisions to be made for you. Yeah, I might need to add a tight end here um, if Goddard's not back, but we'll see as the week goes on. Yep, for sure. So then Friars got a questionable Baker Mayfield. All his Ravens are on a bye. Yeah, well, and and Mayfield had ankle issue, everything negative. So I'm guessing Mayfield's going to play. Um, Zay Flowers on a bye, Jackson on a bye, Devontae Adams on a bye. Uh, Kenneth Walker, questionable. I don't expect him to play. I've got him in a couple leagues. Playing Thursday is going to hurt. Um, so I think he sits out, which is going to not be helpful. But Fryer has Stevenson, Singletary, Camara. He's fine. Yeah. Um, but I, there are no lineup decisions for Fryer at this point either. Yep. So, I the I guess the only lineup decision if you want to switch kickers, no, because I don't care. Okay, perfect. Yeah, um. Much. I am going to – I'm going to take Fryer in this matchup. Just I, I think it could be closer if I know that a chain and Goddard are both healthy and playing and not on snap counts or whatever the case may be, but I don't know that, so I'm going with Fryer. Yeah, I am also going to go with Fryer because of the question marks that I've got. Um, I have a chance because Fryer's core players are all on a bye. Uh, hopefully this is close. Um, if I can squeak one out and keep my pants on, great. But if not, Friar deserves to win, so I'm gonna pick him. Um, did Friar make any moves? Uh, he's flipped Addison for Adams early on. Was his big one? I think only one. Yep, I think you're right. Um, no, he did get – well, a while back he got Ramondre Stevenson for Rashad White, which White's been better, but Stevenson came on looking okay last week. So we'll see what continues there. Yeah. Um, but we're, take, we're both going to take Fryer in this one. Um, so I think we agreed down the board okay. on this one. That's what I got. Sometimes that's good, sometimes it's not. So we'll see. Yep. There are some close matchups that really shouldn't be close because of the buys. So it should hopefully be a fun weekend of football. Yep. And then we will, uh, like I said, we'll hash out some of that wild card situation come next week when we eliminate one or two of these teams out and we can figure out who's where, or everything might just settle this week and be like, well, there we go. Yep. So, all right. Um, Colin, you already know you suck. So I don't have to tell you. Everybody else, do your thing. Have a great weekend of football. And with that, we'll see you next week. We're out.